As many of you already know, the MCAT is a major exam and probably the hardest exam that I've taken to date. And this is no surprise really. The MCAT is specifically designed to be challenging in this way because for many medical schools and probably the majority of medical schools, uh, this is used as a key element to gain interviews and also admission. In this video, I'll be talking about how I specifically crushed the MCAT and the study plan that allowed me to do so. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel and thank you for clicking on this video. For those of you who are new, my name is Terrence. I'm a pre-med student currently in my gap year and I'll be starting medical school this upcoming August of 2020. I previously made a video about how I increased my MCAT score from a 500 to a 513 and that video is starting to gain some traction now. So I wanted to make a follow-up video here about my study plans and my specific study strategy for how I crushed the MCAT. I'll put my score up on the screen here briefly just so you guys can have uh, an idea of how I scored in each section. Uh, to achieve this score, I studied around 40 to 50 hours on average uh, per week over this three month stretch of time. I would study Monday through Saturday and then I would take off on Sunday to give myself a day off. Uh, at first, I would ease my way into it so I wouldn't uh, burn out too quickly. So I would probably start around 20 to 25 hours per week. And then eventually, as I got closer to my test day, I was probably averaging around 50 plus hours of studying per week. This might seem a little bit crazy. Uh, that's probably because it kind of is. Um, this is what I personally did. And you know yourself best of what uh, you can handle. If you could handle more, you know, do more. If you could handle only can handle less, uh, maybe take a little bit more time to study and study less hours per week. It's all about what you find to be the best uh, fit for you. Um, it's also important to have a good work life balance. You want to uh, have that balance of fun and enjoyment and not just this mundane, repetitive stretch of studying because it can lead to burnout and it can lead to you, you know, getting too close to your test and not feeling well mentally. One of the most important points that I mentioned in my previous video of how I increased my MCAT score was how I use a study log to uh, log everything that I studied and I was able to see my progress and efficiency in my studying. Uh, I have to say that a study log is one of the most important tools because it kept me on track and it kept me motivated. You know, when you're studying for a three month period of time, it could definitely be boring and it could definitely be, feel stagnant. Uh, so the benefit was no matter if I had a good day, no matter if I had a bad day, I was able to write something in that log. And then over time, I was able to see how my progression was going. And not only was it motivating to see that visual, but also it kept me going and kept me sh and kept showing me that I wasn't just you know studying to study, but I was also making progress over time and able to check certain things off my box. How my study log worked was I would have certain uh, quote unquote days. Whoa. How my study log worked was I would have certain days, you know, quote unquote, in my calendar. So at first I started with a different subject each day. So one subject each day on top of cars every day. And then eventually I got it to a point where I was compounding multiple subjects in a day uh, of studying. So if it was a biology day, I would write in the beginning of that day, all the things that I would plan to do, or even the day before I would write all the things that I plan to do in that day for biology. And in one column, I would write the things I plan to do. And then the column next to it, and I'll show this on the screen here, I'll put the things that I didn't accomplish uh, from that list. So I know for now the next week, I could see what I need to do for the following week going forward. Along with the study log that I did on the day to day, I also had long term goals. And what the long term goals did was it allowed me to see over two to three weeks, two to four weeks, four weeks, six weeks, what I needed to get accomplished. And it kept me on track so I wouldn't fall behind in my studying process. For me, my first long term plans were to study strictly content for the first four weeks of studying. So from week one to week four, I didn't do any MCAT, MCAT style uh, practice questions. Uh, all I did that were basically practice questions were the cars questions. So I wanted to do cars every single day. And the repetition of cars was something that uh, I felt was the only real way you could practice cars. Um, other than that, I was getting all my science content in. I was doing all the memorizing content. So the uh, memorizing the formulas, memorizing the charts, tables, pathways, facts, definitions for psychology and sociology I was also doing in this time. And after this four weeks was up, I was now looking at the next two weeks, so weeks four to week six, as time I would be incorporating now uh, practice questions. I didn't do practice questions right away because I wanted to 
get as much uh, time in with the content as possible so that I can know once I get to the practice questions where my weaknesses were. Uh, also, the reasons I didn't do the practice questions right away is because I didn't want to waste them. I didn't want to get to the practice questions, do them, and then you know have the answer in the back of my head when I did them another time and get you know just get questions wrong because I just didn't know what I was looking at or I didn't know what certain words meant or what certain definitions were. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I at least made the most of every single practice question I had because I knew that they were valuable and important for my studying process. So into the four to six week point uh, that I was mentioning before, at this point I was studying multiple subjects a day. So at first I was just studying one subject a day, let's say biology one day, bio, biology and maybe biochem the next day, maybe you know, gen chem the following, maybe organic chemistry the following day after that, kind of like a cycle in that way. Uh, now at this point I'm studying multiple subjects of different sections of the MCAT exam in one day and I'm also doing CARS uh, every single day. On top of my studying in multiple subjects and reviewing them through my notes, I was also doing, let's say, three to five passages per study group. So let's say I was doing biology and then physics that day, I would do three to five biology passages and also three to five physics passages on top of my cars practice. And as we approached week six, I had made week six the time where I would start doing full length practice exams. So from weeks four to six, I was essentially practicing and put my mind in a state where I was essentially practicing for uh, a real MCAT exam. So I wanted to treat every single practice test as if it was the real deal. Um, so I would prepare weeks four to six, incorporating my practice problems into my studying. And I would prepare from four to six, basically as if I was studying for the real deal coming up at week six. Now from week six all the way up until week 12, which was my actual exam date uh, at the end of 12 weeks, I was taking one practice exam per day. And this just allowed me to build up a lot of stamina, a lot of endurance, uh, just understanding and, and preparing myself for the mental strain and just getting used to that mental strain of taking a seven hour straight exam. Uh, the following days after my full lengths, I would review them. So I would take a full length exam, let's say on a Friday, and then spend all Saturday reviewing that full length in detail, understanding what I got wrong, why I got them wrong, and the types of questions I was getting wrong. I put all my wrong things into a wrong notebook. So all the things that I was struggling with or I kept repetitively getting wrong, I'll put into one notebook to review and study later. And that's how I pretty much prepared for the following week, seeing what weak points I had, uh, always touching up on you know my weak points and also focusing on my strong points. But kind of tailoring it based on how I did on that practice exam and what I needed to really focus on so that the following week when I took another one, I didn't make those same uh, errors. And in the six to 12 week period, I was no longer learning new material. So I mentioned how in the weeks one to four, I was studying just content. So by the time I got to week six, I, I had probably seen every single thing at least one time. And now from week six to 12, I was not only reviewing some of the strong points that I had or some of the uh, nomenclature, the charts, tables, all the memorizing contents, formulas. I was keeping that sharp, but I was also now focusing on my weak points and just refreshing content from week six uh, to week 12. Um, I didn't write down specifically how many passages I was doing per day. Uh, so I mentioned before how I was doing three to five passages per subject. I didn't write down how many passages I was doing per day because they varied day to day. But I'd say as I got closer to the exam, I was probably doing 80 to 100 questions a day at this point. I was going through flashcards, I was doing um, freestanding questions, and I was also doing passage questions on UWorld and also the AAMC uh, question banks for each section. And I would just go through, let's say, 20 questions at a time, and I'd tie myself, and I'd go through and look at the questions and understand what I got wrong, put the wrong answers in the wrong notebook, and then you know, repeat every single day with different subjects just like that. So repeating this over and over, I uh, eventually got to my final practice test, which I took one week out from my actual test. And I made sure that the practice test that I took one week out was an AAMC test. And I alternated back and forth um, when I was going. So I used AAMC and I also used Next Step. And as I was going through, I was doing AAMC, the Next Step, then maybe AAMC again, Next Step. And what this allowed me to do is not only change it up, but it saved, I could save some of the AAMCs for when I needed them at the end because they are so accurate and they are more uh, realistic for what you're going to get on the actual exam. Uh, I made sure I saved the AAMC for the final 
tests I took before my real thing. So that was pretty much my entire breakdown from week one to week 12. And the organization was very helpful in my studying plan and what pretty much got me to the point where I was able to be confident in my MCAT score and ultimately multiple medical school acceptances because I was able to kind of get in, get my foot in the door for a lot of the interviews. Um, so thank you for everybody that watched to the end. And if you have any questions about things that you want me to clarify, please make sure you leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to clarify anything that I might have brushed over uh, in this video. Please subscribe if you're new. I'll be putting out weekly videos just like this one on the MCAT, my pre-med experience, uh, also admissions and my future experiences as a medical student. So please subscribe, like the video if you enjoy this video. Good luck to everybody taking their MCAT. Study hard, you can do it and let's get it.